In the previous lessons, we used three JavaScript libraries to run React. These were Babel, React, and the React DOM. However, someone have mentioned that when we run React projects in this way, the page reloading speed is relatively slow. This is because in this step, our project needs to fetch these three libraries from the internet during runtime. This means the page's performance depends on the network speed when accessing these sites. Moreover, there are actually more than just these three libraries involved, because each of them also imports several other JavaScript modules. As the project complexity increases, we will need to bring in many other modules, not just these three. Therefore, using this method to run React in practical development is unrealistic. The latest React 19 document recommends several production-level React frameworks. By installing these frameworks, we will automatically create a React-supported application for us, setting up the directory structure and the basic files. We can use it directly. This approach is also the most commonly used in our development. However, I don't want to discuss this approach right now because it installs many dependencies and files that we don't need at this stage. It also pre-configures features such as routing and data fetching solutions, which we won't use for now. Since we don't need them, we don't need to install such a heavy framework. So, in this lesson, we'll attempt to manually create a React project step-by-step step from scratch, without importing these three library files from Internet. Instead, we will set up a local project, eliminating the need to fetch files over the Internet, thus achieving faster project execution. Through this manual setup, we can truly understand the purpose of each file in the project rather than just knowing how to use it without understanding why. In future lessons, we will use Vite to create projects. Vite is a fast and modern front-end build tool known for its lightweight and efficient features especially suited for modern front-end frameworks like Vue, React, and Svelte. Before diving into Vite, however, this lesson introduces the previous popular method of manually creating a React project by installing React, React DOM, and React Scripts. React Scripts is the core dependency of the once widely used Create React App scaffold, encapsulating Webpack configurations and other development tools. In the next lesson, we'll use the more modern way Vite to create projects. Then, by studying both methods, we can compare them and understand the advantages of using Vite. Before starting, I want to mention that when creating React projects, we manage them through package managers. Common package managers include npm, yarn, pnpm, and the recent popular bun. Projects managed by package managers cannot be run directly in the browser. So we must be bundled using a bundler before running. In the past, we most commonly used Webpack for bundling. But Webpack is relatively cumbersome. We need to configure Webpack extensively. 
specifying the entry file, required plugins, etc. If we configure Webpack line by line manually, it's very tedious. Luckily, React provides a tool to simplify this process. The aforementioned React Scripts. React Scripts offers us a React development environment and related dependencies, including Webpack, Babel, testing frameworks, etc., all integrated into this package. This eliminates the need to configure and download everything separately during React project development. Instead, we can just simply install the React Scripts package. After installing React Scripts, it comes with Webpack pre-configured. This pre-configuration includes some conventions and rules we need to follow. If we don't follow these conventions, the default configuration becomes useless, and additional configurations would be required. Thus, in daily development, there is a saying, convention over configuration. Let's learn about the conventions introduced by React Scripts. First, it defines a project structure. In the project's root directory, we need to create two folders, public and src. The public folder contains files that can be directly accessed externally, such as static images, CSS files, and files that do not require Webpack bundling. You can think of it as a static directory. These files are optional depending on your needs, except for one mandatory file, index.html. Index.html serves as the template for our homepage. In it, we can configure things like the homepage title, root element, keywords, etc. Then the second folder is src which is the source code directory. It must contain the index.js file, which serves as the entry point. Webpack will use this file as the entry point for compiling JavaScript and linking it to the index.html file. Thus, for menu creation, the only mandatory files are the index.html file in the public directory and the index.js file in the src directory. Now, let's create this structure. So we create a new directory and name the project, uh, maybe 08 create react. Then first, let's create a public folder and um, index.html file in it. We'll modify the title and create a root div for rendering elements. Then create an src folder and an index.js file in it. With the structure complete, let's initialize the project. Open the terminal and initialize the project to create a package.json file. Navigate to the project directory using cd and uh, run npm init hyphen y. Or if you use yang, you can run yang init hyphen y. Hyphen Y skips the prompts for project name, version, uh, description, entry file, etc. using default values to create the package.json file. After executing the command, you'll find a new package.json file in the directory. Opening this file reveals the 
automatically populated project information. Next, install three dependencies using npm i React, React DOM, and the React Scripts. If you are using Young, the command is Young add, followed by the these three packages. Installing React Scripts takes longer due to its extensive content, and the time required depends on your network speed. It takes two minutes for me. By the way, uh, in the next lesson, we'll use Vite to replace React scripts, and we can compare the speeds at that time. You might notice several warnings during the, the installation of React scripts. This is because React scripts haven't been updated for a long time. Its latest version, 5.0.1, was released three years ago. Many files it references have changed or been deprecated over the years. This is another reason why we will switch to Vite in the future. For now, we can ignore the warnings, and this lesson is just a transitional step to compare with the Vite method. Next, let's write some code in the index.js entry file to render content into the root element. We'll reuse the list from the last lesson. Copy the code from the previous lesson, uh, starting from line 13. Remove the external library uh, imports and replace them with local imports of React. DOM uh, slash client. Then run mpx react scripts start. This command will automatically open the project in the browser, and then you'll see the list rendered on the page. Right. Let me briefly explain. Some of you may have noticed that we don't have a root div here in index.js file. Yet, it is successfully retrieved and rendered on the page. This is because Webpack, configured by uh, React Scripts, performs this operation behind the scenes. It fetches the element from index.html, uh, although index.html uh, does not contain any code to import the index.js file. The connection between them is handled by Webpack behind the scenes, which is why when we create the structure, we need to follow its conventions. I mean, well, we create an index.html in the public folder and index.js file in uh, SRC folder. And the command I just ran starts a development server, enabling hot reloading for real time updates. Whenever we modify the code, eliminating the need for repeated bundling. It's similar to the live server extension we use when running HTML files. Besides the start command, React Scripts provides a build command for bundling the project for production. After bundling, you'll find a new build folder in the project directory. This folder contains all the code and resources merged into a single package by Webpack. Opening the index.html file in this folder should render the home page of this project. However, opening it directly in the browser shows nothing. This is because the bundled files are meant to be developed on a server. When opened locally, the file paths are incorrect. This 
forward slash in the path indicates the server's root directory, which doesn't exist locally. To fix this, modify the path by adding a dot or removing the forward slash. With this change, the files will load correctly when opened locally. Thus, the npx react script start and npx react script build. These two commands are the two commonly used commands in react scripts. However, these commands are lengthy and hard to remember. A handy trick is to add scripts to the package.json file. For instance, add a start script with the value react scripts start and a build script with the value uh, react scripts build. This way, you can run the development server with npm start. Cool. And also, you can bundle the project with npm run build. Notice this run word can be omitted for start, but it is required for build. With these steps, we've created a standard React project manually from scratch. In the next lesson, we'll use Vite to manually rebuild this project and compare these two methods.